Hello, I recently purchased the Shure MV7 mic for live streaming. So the question is, is it the right mic for me? Is it a great mic for live streaming? I'm going to start with the conclusion by saying, yes, this is a keeper. I love the mic. I love the way it makes my voice sound. So I live stream, but if your setup is anything like mine, and I think many of you are, Live streaming is, you know, is not my day job. I have a day job. I own a business. I'm a financial advisor and I use live streaming as a way to network, to grow my brand, my personal brand uh, for, for marketing. And I love to teach. That's what I love about live streaming. I happen to enjoy the process. I just enjoy live streaming. So I wanted to up my game and I've been using the Blue Yeti for the better part of a year and a half. This is a great mic, but what I've discovered is it's not really the best mic for my setup. And if your setup is anything like mine, and it probably is, then you, you are definitely going to want to stick around, check out the review of the Shure MV7, and you might actually decide that the next time you upgrade your audio, this could be the mic for you. So I'm just going to roll a real quick introduction. Stick with me. This is going to be good and we're going to make this nice and quick. And we're back. Thank you so much for joining me. I know your time is valuable, and I really appreciate uh, that you're spending some of it with me. We're talking about the Shure MV7 podcast microphone. It's made for voice, and I love the way uh, it makes me sound. I'm super, super pumped over this mic. And I was looking for that, you know, I, I have to do air, quotation, air quotes, because it, I feel like it's so silly to say, but I was looking for that rich podcasty slash radio announcer voice but it's true the growth in live streaming has been explosive and i think as more and more people live stream it's getting harder and harder to stand out and one of the things that i felt i needed to do was to up my audio game you've heard the expression that uh, half a video is audio i think it's more like three quarters of video is audio. So I wanted to make sure that I'm coming in clear and with a, a really easy listening voice. <clears throat> and that's exactly what this mic does. I'm using it in the USB mode. I like plug and play. And I've, I've seen enough people testing it out to see that there's really no difference between using this phone, uh, between using this microphone as an XLR mic or just a USB mic. And there are some ways to get the settings right that are so simple. So just to give you an idea, and if you're a beginner with audio, something that uh, you should know, an XLR cable, see the bottom of the mic, there's an XLR adapter there. And I have it plugged into the USB mode. I have my uh, headphones directly into the mic, but these are the ends of an XLR cable. Okay, very different than your typical USB cable. And when you use it in XLR mode, you're also going to need a preamp and mixer, something that looks a lot like this. This is the Yamaha uh, MG10XU. I don't know if you could see that. So I have the equipment to use this as an XLR, but I've decided to just skip it all together. The ease of use and the quality of the uh, sound that I get from this mic, uh, it, it makes me want to just skip the XLR altogether, which I've decided to do. So you tell me, how do I sound? There's a few things that I wish I knew. <clears throat> there, there are a couple of things that I wish I knew before I bought my first serious mic for live streaming, which is the uh, Blue Yeti, which we all, I think, can call Old Faithful. It's such a popular mic, and it's a great mic. So first of all, there is an endless amount of choices of, of microphones. There are so many to choose from in all different price ranges, quality, dynamic, condenser, USB, XLR, the, the list goes on and on. I think it's important to know the difference, especially for a beginner live streamer, 
is that a condenser mic like the USB, condenser mics, you typically talk into the front of the mic to the side. That's where the uh, microphone is located. Okay. A condenser mic is very sensitive to sound. It picks up a lot of background noise. And that's a big complaint with, with the Blue Yeti. But the Blue Yeti is supposed to do that. You're complaining about something that the Blue Yeti is supposed to do. It's a condenser mic. It's supposed to pick up a lot of sound and bring in a lot of audio. So I'll give you a quick uh, view, a quick test of what the Blue Yeti sounds like compared to this mic. Let me just go into my settings. I just want to point something else out too. I'm, I'm testing this as a live streamer, okay? I, I live stream every day. I've done over 200 live streams with the Blue Yeti, but I, I use StreamYard as my live streaming platform. And I'm actually testing this right now. You're watching me. I'm testing in StreamYard in the record only mode. So what better way to test out a mic for live streaming than to actually do this review in StreamYard? So that's what I'm doing now. So what you hear is what you get. But let me just see if I could change some settings. And real quick, let's let's see what the let's see what the a blue yeti would have would sound like. Just to give you an idea, Yeti. There we go. So I have the mic now set in the Blue Yeti. And this is how most people use it. They kind of keep it um, over here, right here. And they talk into it. And it, it sounds a little tinny to me. It picks up a lot of background noise. And it just it's not the sound that I was looking for. But one way you could improve the sound on the Blue Yeti is turn the gain off. Just turn the gain all the way off, get the mic up front and personal, and I think you'll get a much better sound out of the Blue Yeti. But there's really not much you could do to get the sound you want with the Blue Yeti. So let's go back to the Shure mic, the, and I think you'll see an even bigger difference of how great the Shure mic sounds. Okay, let's see, how's that? And you can see the difference. It's, uh, it's a very big, difference. I think if you're going to use the Blue Yeti, and I didn't want to make this just a head-to-head -head comparison between Blue Yeti and the Shure MV7, but if you have a very uh, a lot of soundproofing in your streaming environment where there's not a lot of echo and not a lot of chance for background noises and interruptions, I think the Blue Yeti as a condenser mic would work. Uh, I think this mic would work very well. Okay. I think the Blue Yeti would, would be fine. I typically stream from either my office, my conference room, or my home, um, but mostly from my office. And you're talking about a drop ceiling. You're talking about sheetrock walls. You're talking about big glass window, a hard desk, and I'm speaking directly into a computer monitor, which is what I'm doing now. And that's probably the least ideal setup for the Blue Yeti, a condenser mic, but it's a very good setup, I think, for a dynamic mic like this. So a dynamic mic means you get up front and personal with it. You get close to the mic. It only picks up noise like right in front of it. There, yes, you could get a little bit of background noise into it, but it's a lot less likely that that'll happen. And you can see if I move back from the mic a little, my voice becomes very faint. That's what a dynamic mic is supposed to do. So I love the mic, and I think it gives me that true podcasty voice. What do you think? I want to show you the software um, of how this this works. So I, I it comes with software that you just download from the Shure website, and I think it's the easiest software that I've ever downloaded in my life. So for those of you, I was just saying, you know, this is just plug and play. And for those of you who are thinking, oh, or you know, thinking Mitch just says plug and play, and I was talking about software, you don't have to use the software. Nobody's forcing you. It sounds great without the software, but the software doesn't need any instructions. It's so intuitive. You just play around with it a little bit. There are a gazillion videos on YouTube about how to use the software, how to use the mic. There's unboxing videos, but this again is specifically for somebody who's live streaming in a less than ideal environment with lots of echo, some opportunity for background noise, and not a lot of opportunity for soundproofing. And it's also for somebody who doesn't want to go out and spend extra money on 
um, a preamp, a mixer, and other equipment that you may need to get your mic sounding as well as you could. So let's just take a look. This is the software, the uh, Sure Plus Motif software. I don't know if you can see that on your little uh, smartphone screen there, but I have it set up to the manual mode. The gain is at 30. You know, the, the higher the gain, the louder, the, the higher the gain, the more sensitive the mic will be in picking up sound. Um, so I like it at 30. I don't want to go full gain. I think this is enough. I have um, the equalizer option. Let's just unlock that. I think you'll be able to see a little bit better. The equalizer option I have set for uh, presence boost. You can have no equalizer or just flat equalizer, high pass, presence boost, or presence boost with high pass. And I have the compressor set for medium. And I think I have it pretty much dialed in the way I want my voice to sound. But there is an auto level as well. It just blacks, blacks out for a second when you switch over to, uh, to, over to auto level. But I have it on the near setting. So this is proximity. So proximity is just the uh, how close or far you are from the microphone. You could set it up for a far proximity or a near proximity. I like to be near the mic. Um, I like the mic in the screenshot with my headphones on. It's just part of the look that I like. It's part of the look that I'm going for. And I just think that when you're closer to the mic, especially a dynamic mic, your voice comes out a little richer, a little more, a little bit better tone. So I'm, I get close to the mic, practically touching my chin. I aim the mic more or less at my chin, a little bit below my mouth. And that's, <clears throat> that's where I like it for me. It has a few modes. You could go into the bright mode, and I think that sounds really good. Or you can go into the dark mode. I call the dark mode my uh, smooth jazz uh, DJ radio you know, mode. But I think it sounds good. And if you just want to go with the auto level, I, keep, I would keep it at the natural. I think that works for me. I think my voice is uh, already deep enough. I don't need the dark tone. But that's, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. And uh, let me stop sharing the screen. So... I think it's a great mic. The only knock against it is it's $250 and it's a combination XLR and USB mic in one. I think it would have been really cool if Shure just made this into a USB mic and a separate XLR mic. And I think it would have reached a lot more people. I think Shure could really tout this as the uh, XLR killer. It's, it's that good in USB. And I've seen a lot of, like I said, I've seen a lot of YouTubers test the mic against the Shure SM7B, which is the mic that Joe Rogan uses in his podcast. And the testers have gotten the same quality sound out of this mic as the uh, SM7B, except that mic is about $400 and you need a preamp, a cloud lifter. Well, uh, you might you might need a, a really good mixing board. It's just you're you're, you're probably in for about a thousand dollars just to get started with that particular mic. Whereas this mic, it's just plug and play. You download the software. It, it took literally a second to download it. Easiest software I've ever downloaded in my life. So that's my uh, review. I'm sticking with it. And always remember that there is no substitute for good content. Mic just the mic just helps you deliver it. And there are an endless amount of options, but the best mic is the one that works best for you. Thank you so much for watching, and I want to wish you well in your content creation journey.